There's no reason why that couldn't be your story. You don't have an expiration date. Oh, I love that. The actual pages. Like, that's all that matters at the end of the day. This is the Authors and Agents Podcast. Sarah, I'm super excited to have you on today to be able to learn more about you, your journey through publishing. But first, let's start off by talking about your latest release, Happy Medium. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Sure. Um, So Happy Medium is a rom-com about a fake spirit medium who is hired to exercise a purportedly haunted goat farm in Maryland. Uh, But when she gets there, she finds a grumpy young farmer who immediately clocks her as a fraud um, and tells her to get out. Uh, And as she's trying to uh, leave, she runs into an actual real ghost that she can see and talk to. And... um, is convinced to stay at the farm and help this ghost convince the farmer that there is a family curse that threatens his life. Um, And so it is real silly, I guess. (laughs) But I love it. That's so awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, super exciting. And the cover, you know, I remember seeing like the cover reveal however many moons ago, right? And being like, oh my gosh, how cute. Such a great cover. Yeah, Vicky Chu at Berkeley did a really good job. Um, it was one of the, the, the cover for my first book took us like 20 iterations before we got it. Uh, this one was like, I think her first like two options were like, yeah, those are perfect. Like, let's, let's go with that. She really is great. That's wonderful. So how exciting your second book coming out into the world. So tell me a little bit about your journey to this point, you know, having, Uh, you know, of course you can give us the highlights of it, but what does that look like for you? Um, so I wrote a lot as a little kid. It was like one of my favorite activities to make little books, um, write little stories. Um, but it's something I kind of grew out of in my early teens and I got real serious and academic for a while and focused more on writing history papers and things like that through uh, grad school. And then I was, so I was working full time, getting my master's part time and also pregnant for like the second half of the degree. And so um, all of those things sort of ended at once where I got my master's and then a month later, my daughter was born. And then like four months later, I wound up leaving my job. And so everything kind of changed very suddenly in my life. And I was like, you know, at home with an infant. And one of the only easy things to do while holding her was to read on my phone. Uh, So I got back into reading for fun for the first time in years and years and years. And that eventually kind of turned into like, huh, maybe I should write like that. I used to love that so much. And like, maybe that's something I could do again. And a friend of mine um, was taking a class about picture book writing. And I told her, you know, I'm thinking about writing, but I just don't know like what to do. Like, I feel like I need to know everything before I get into it. She's like, just start and see what happens. And I was like, (laughs) why didn't I think of that? So I, um, I started spending my like free time. I told my, I told my husband, like, I think I want to do this. I showed him like the first chapter I had written, And he was very supportive and um, we started arranging our schedules so that he would get home from work and take the baby and I would go out to Starbucks and like write for an hour or two. Good old Starbucks writing. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah. (laughs) And I was living in DC at the time. So it was like one of the only places that was like kind of open later that I could just like linger. Um, And so after a couple months, I had my first manuscript written. I was all excited and so confident in it. And I learned all about querying and all that. And I started sending it to agents. And it was like, I got a couple full requests, but it was not, it was not right. Like it wasn't marketable. It wasn't good, honestly. Um, so I got something like a hundred rejections on that one yeah. and was like, all right, I understand. Like I have to try <laughs> something to else next. now. Yes. <laughs> yes. So then I wrote, um, I started writing my second manuscript. I finished the first chapter a week before lockdown Mm. and then just kind of powered through that spring as like a way to keep myself 
distracted. Um, I would like sit in our bedroom because we were sharing a one bedroom apartment still with, uh, you know, us and our toddler. And um, I would just sit in the bedroom with the door closed and music turned up, just trying to get it out. Um, And that one was closer, but it still wasn't quite right. And so um, we moved and I suddenly had more space and um, an easier area to drive around. So I would go park the car outside of a fast food place and mooch the Wi-Fi and just work on writing until my feet froze, basically. Um, And I wrote Mrs. Nash's Ashes, and it was like finally finding my voice, finally leaning into everything that made me me, um, and just trusting that that was what was going to work. Um, as opposed to trying to make myself fit a mold. And it did. Um, That one, I, you know, I had racked up 200 something rejections by that point. And I was like, you know, if this one doesn't do it, I don't know what will. And I queried. And within a week, I had an offer. And um, by the time the two weeks uh, were up, I had five more. And I was able to pick from a lot of really great agents and wound up with Taylor Haggerty at Root. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you want me to get into the rest of it yet, but yes, that's, yes. that's sort of how I got. Yeah. Um, so we did a very quick round of revisions um, and then Taylor sent it out uh, on sub. And it was only like a week and I was already like losing my mind. I was like, how am I going to deal with this? This is awful. <laughs> um, and then I got a call at like three o'clock on a Friday from her be- or an email being like, Hey, just to let you know, like um, one of the editors is reading and loving. And I was like, that's great. And it was so nice to have news that early and positive news that my husband was like, let's go out to eat. Like, let's go out to dinner. So we went out to dinner. And while I was like in the middle of dinner, Taylor called and was like, we have a preempt offer. (laughs) And (laughs) um, so I'm just like standing outside of a burger restaurant downtown, like trying to (laughs) hear her and not freak out too much. Um, And she was like, you know, I think we can maybe do better. I think, you know, other editors should be able to consider it. And so we wound up going to auction and um, it was a six editor auction. And I was like, absolutely stunned and suffering from imposter syndrome being like, they are going to realize soon that this is not worth their money. (laughs) Um, But I pulled one over on them and um, (laughs) wound up going with Berkeley. And um, it's it's been really great. I had a two book contract and have sold a third, which is, you know, always good. Um, So it's sort of a it's one of those stories where like everything that could go right sort of did. But it took a while to get there. It took like two years to get there. Um, and then it was kind of best case scenario, which I was not expecting. Yeah, Real I mean, whirlwind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you took a long time to get there, but then once you were there, it was like, everything's happening all at once. Right. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's exciting and, and so wonderful. So looking back on your querying journey, you know, what would maybe your top tip be to people who are querying? Obviously different querying market now, but, um, you know, like what would your top tip be for authors who are, you know, in the querying trenches right now? I mean, I would say doing your research is so important. My first time I kind of just flung it at anyone who remotely seemed like a good choice yeah (laughs) um even if it was like kind of not really their area I was still sending it to them um and hoping for the best and it's not like that is a bad thing necessarily but it's very time consuming and um it's a lot of effort I think kind of doing your research early on to know exactly who to target with your query will save you a lot of time. Um, And also like, don't be afraid of rejection because rejection is actually good. Um, 
you know, not all agents have time to give you personalized feedback. But what I learned was that by the time I submitted my third manuscript to some of these same agents, they remembered me and they were like, really excited for me that I had grown so much as a writer. And some of them had been kind of near misses on book two and were like definite yeses on book three. Um, so thinking of rejection as relationship building, I think, is a fun, uh, less soul crushing spin on the process. I don't think I've ever heard anybody put it that way in all my interviews that I've done. And I love that actually, because yeah, I mean, if you continue to grow and, and not give up through the process, yeah, these agents, even though, yes, they see so many could be like, oh, wow, I actually remember the other things she sent and wow, look at all the, the growth and improvement. That's awesome. I'm writing it down because I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing those tips. Querying is um, soul sucking at times, but it is what you got to do. It's what you got to do. <laughs> so thinking about happy medium, what is something you hope readers will take away from this story? I mean, above all, I hope they enjoy themselves. That's kind of always my goal. Um, it's like a real bummer if there's a rom-com and it doesn't make you enjoy yeah. yourself or it's yeah. not funny. Um, so hopefully people have fun with it, maybe laugh. Um, that's like number one. But I think with Happy Medium in, in particular, it's, it's a book about loneliness, I think, at its heart. And I hope that maybe readers will feel a little less alone um, spending time with these characters and seeing these lonely people finding each other and finding people who accept and love them for who they are. I like that. I I always want to feel a little less alone when I read a book, right? Like just, okay, yes. I Whether it's, you know, fictional people or, or whatever, like I just feel like immersed in this and feel a little bit less alone. I think that's lovely. And yes, we should always be laughing at rom-coms, you know, because if we're not enjoying it, then it's probably not a rom-com. <laughs> yeah. Right? Nothing more disappointing than that. Of like, yes. this, I thought this was a rom-com, but I'm just sad. Like, yeah. that's not, <laughs> I've been lied to. <laughs> so when you love to read for a pleasure, reading for yourself, who are some of your favorite authors to read? Um, I'm a big fan of Sarah Hogel, um, Carrie Winfrey. Um, I think that they do comedy very well. Um, in historicals, Julianne Long, I think, does physical comedy really well, which is hard to do in a book. Mm -hmm. um, but she's she's a master. Um, Jennifer Cruzy is like a hugely influential author for me. I found her stuff really early on when reading romance. And um, I just think she's amazing. Um, I really love her stuff so much um and i actually on the non-romance side i really like amor towels i think that his writing is so charming and interesting and i have a lot of fun reading his books um and same with lily king um hillary lichter i think is brilliant um i try to read a couple more lit fic books a year because I find that those are the things that really push me and my craft farther um, mm -hmm. and kind of help me see what I can do within the romance genre um, that maybe is not commonly done or could be really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. Thank you for sharing those. I think I like this question because it, we all have different answers to it and there's so many books out there, so many authors who we haven't, even heard of, but you know, we can always add more to our list. That's never ending already. <laughs> so looking back on your younger self who was ready to get in there and try writing, um, you know, what's some advice you would give to your younger self or an aspiring author? I think this probably applies to life in general, but it's something that I really had to learn in sort of the process of publishing specifically um, but like sort of the idea of figuring out what is beyond your control and letting it go. Mm -hmm. I think 
especially with my debut, I clung so much to the control aspect of it and wanted to have my hand in everything and wanted to know what was going on and wanted numbers and wanted to be kept apprised of every single thing happening behind the scenes. And that's just not how it works. And honestly, for the best, like in reality, I do not think having that information would have been good for me. Um, And so just kind of learning to let go of your art once and you know let it become a product and be at peace with that um is like a really important skill in traditional publishing um that I wish I had better prepared myself for I guess uh at least as a debut it has been much easier this time around um knowing all the things that I do not need to know yeah yeah you're a little bit more okay yes you handle all of that Mm -hmm. let me know what I can do but it have fun. <laughs> definitely. I think that's definitely good advice as you make the transition. You know, I think there's such a transition from writing, drafting this, this thing you love for yourself and then transitioning to, okay, querying, this is a business. It becomes, like you said, your art to a product. Um, that can be a hard mindset shift, but definitely something that needs to happen. Yeah. I think it's also about patience. I mean, when you're just writing with the hope of querying and stuff, it's all your own choice. It's like you're the one dictating your writing schedule and how quickly it's getting done and when you're sending things out. But once it's with other people, that's just not something you can control. And at least in traditional publishing, so much is happening behind the scenes. Um, I actually have a piece of art on my wall that says, um, just because it's taking time doesn't mean it isn't happening. Mm -hmm. And that was like a really important lesson as well of like, knowing that just because something isn't instantaneous doesn't mean it won't happen or just because you know it's not it's not immediately clear that it's happening doesn't mean it's not happening somewhere definitely definitely so talking about the actual act of writing what is the thing you most enjoy about writing and what's the most challenging thing for you about writing I mean the simple answer is I love when it's going well and I hate when it isn't. Yes. Um, <laughs> I think each book is a little different in what challenges me about it. Um, and just also what's going on in my life, like what my writing time is looking like, mm. what my mental health is looking like, what other obligations I have. Um, I really love starting a new project and discovering its voice, discovering the characters, like, having the characters meet each other for the first time, I feel like that is the most exciting part of a book for me. Um, Because it's kind of like feeling what it's going to feel like as a reader. Um, It's like I get the first peek at it, and that's really fun. Um, The hardest thing for me, revisions are hard. Uh, I might just be saying that because I'm really, really deep in book three revisions right now, and it's pretty much a partial rewrite. but it always winds up better having done it. But while I'm doing it, it is very hard for me um, to get in and stay in that brain space where it's more of a problem solving um, situation versus a creative situation sometimes. Um, and it it takes a lot out of me, to be honest. I like I've been napping every single day for the past several weeks because I just get really tired um, having to think that hard. That is some hard thinking, especially after you've written the whole book and now you're like, okay, let's go and change a lot of it. (laughs) That can be very, very just, you know, like hard on your brain, but just emotionally hard too. It, it, there's writers understand it (laughs) for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where like tweaking individual lines totally fine and easy. Yeah. Changing the structure when I personally do not understand structure anyway, <laughs> very hard. <laughs> very hard. That's a challenge. Take your naps, you need it. <laughs> yeah. So, if you were to genre hop into something completely different than rom-coms, you know, what would you want to try writing? I mean, I do have a soft spot for, like, sort of historical book club Mm. slash lit fic. 
I think my biggest issue is when I tried dabbling in that when I first started out, I took it to a, a writing workshop I was part of at a local library early on. And um, I meant it to be very serious and they thought it was very funny. And I was like, oh, oh whoops. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think, I think I would have to do some work to figure out tone um, or just make it funny. I don't know. But I mean... I also, I really love a historical mystery, but I don't mm. know that I have the brain to be writing mysteries. Like, I just don't, I maybe it relates to how I don't do structure. Um, my third book has a treasure hunt, and that has pushed me to my limits. I don't think there I could do an actual mystery. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think some of that could be fun. Definitely historical uh, my background is in history, and I think it would be really fun to write something that was purely historical. Well, historical could be fun, and, and you could make it funny. You could have it be, have serious things, but have funny, you know, moments throughout it, because those that could be great. It could be like a historical comedy, and I think that'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah, it could be fun. One day. So, one day. When you get there, that's fine. I always like to think of you know, what I always have random ideas that come to me that I like write in my little notes app. And a lot of them are very random and it's like, oh my gosh, stick to a lane here. But <clears throat> I recently switched genres. I, I've, um, my first book was a mystery, a murder mystery. And I love that, but it does require a lot of like a murder board notes, mm -hmm. lots of diagrams, different things. <laughs> so it is, you know, different parts of your brain, depending on what genre you're writing but it's all fun at least you could you know you don't have to write the same thing forever you can think about it and and try something new if you want someday yeah and I think that's what is good about my agent is that um you know if I send her an idea and it's too far off the beaten path she's like maybe not yet maybe yeah. maybe a couple books down the line um <laughs> you know let's establish a readership before you go doing weird stuff um, and I think I think that is very helpful to me to have her kind of reminding me, you know, let's get some contemporary rom-coms under your belt first. Yes, definitely. There is still time to go a little bit off the, the track of what your, your readers are expecting from you. <laughs> so Sarah, I just have a few questions left. I'd love to know who have been like your biggest supporters of your writing. Um, I mean, definitely my husband. Um, like I said, he was, he took my desire to write seriously from the beginning. He, you know, was willing to read my first chapter and told me, hey, this is pretty good. Like, you should keep up with it. Um, and he's been very supportive, um, making sure I have the space and time, even before it was my job, um, just making sure I got that time to myself because he, not only could see that it was helping me mentally, um, but also because he believes in the in the writing I do. He thinks it's good. Um, he has probably reread my books more than almost anyone other than me and my editor. Um, I love that. And, and, you know, just the practical stuff of all the stuff he does around the house with our daughter. Um, just, you know, he's... He's kind of like my unofficial publicist. He's the one that's constantly like searching for new mentions of me on places oh, and um, his support. Yeah, his Goodreads review on Mrs. Nash's Ashes has several hundred likes mm -hmm. and is very sweet. Um, uh, and of course, like my parents um, have been supportive. I don't know they fully like understand what I'm doing all the time um but my mom is not a big reader but she reads my books my dad is not a big fiction reader but he did eventually after a couple weeks of trying get through <laughs> Mrs. Nash um and you know they're very proud and um I it's it's one of those things where like sometimes I have to calm them down like they brought two huge sheet cakes to my debut launch oh event gosh, and like a amazing. large blown up a large blown up canvas of my face oh. it was very I was like and they wanted to put it next to me at my signing table I was like oh. this is not happening and then they put it by the cakes and it felt like a wake or something it was just very um but it's very sweet my mom keeps getting me these custom pillows of my covers that's amazing it, it's they're very sweet people 
That is so great. You have some great supporters <laughs> in your corner. And, you know, what your husband does at home is just, like, so crucial. Even if he didn't actually read your work, because my husband is not a big reader. He's read, like, the first 15% of all of my books, and then he sort of fizzles out. But he's always like, they're really good. He's just, like, can't make it through any book ever. But, you know, I understand, like, all the stuff that he does at home for you is so crucial, and you getting the time to to do what you need to do. So that's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, he's, it's funny because he started reading romance um, because I was writing it and he wanted to be able to give me better feedback. And now like he reads, I mean, he's reading books that I haven't read and telling me if they're, you know, worth reading. And um, he has like, you know, a thorough knowledge of what's out there and by who and everything. He's, he's, he's kind of an expert uh, on romance now too, uh, which is fun that we have that as a common thing now. Oh my gosh. That's so fun. Yeah. He is all in for you to make sure that you are, if you're not a price of the market, he is right. He's like, I know what's going on. Let me tell you. (laughs) That is the best. And one of my, one of my favorite things we do is every night before bed, um, we read aloud and usually it's a romance book. And so like we have read through, like all of Julianne Long's books and right now we're reading Courtney Milan and like it's just really fun to get to do that with your partner at the end of the day um and just kind of it's like a little two-person book club that is so great maybe that's how I can get my husband to finish a book maybe we need to start our own two-person book club Oh my gosh. Well, I love it. So I've got two questions left. So what's your like writing fuel, like favorite snack or drink when you're taking a break that really helps you keep going? I'm one of those people that if I am going, I'm going and I kind of forget to eat or drink. Um, there you go. <laughs> but um, I do love to work at a coffee shop. Um, one of my favorite ones here in Frederick is called Gravel and Grind, and they have incredible flavored lattes. Um, they have one that is a Nutella and orange blossom latte. Um, wow. So I'll often go there and get that usually iced with, um, for food, they specialize in toasts, various toasts. Um, so I will get like an avocado radish cucumber toast and my lot, my fancy latte and st- uh, sit there for a couple hours and, and work. Um, but I will say half the time I eat and then start working and then forget my lattes there. And then it's like the ice is all melted. And, but yeah, I, I do really like that. And then when I've started out, uh, at the Starbucks, it was very much like a iced mocha and they used to have this like roasted ham and Swiss sandwich that I was obsessed with. Um, but I don't, I try not to have that much sugar anymore with the iced mochas. Yeah, those that drink from the orange Nutella thing sounds incredible. That is creative. It is very good. Yeah. Well, my last question for you is what is your favorite book right now? This is not your favorite book of all time. Just something you've read recently that you thought was really good. Um, I recently read India Holden's next book that's coming out, I believe, July 23rd. Um, uh, the Ornith ornithologist's field guide to love i believe it's Mm. called um it's her new series um i really loved her first series and the dangerous damsels um this one is a little different but still has the charm and humor and wit that i really love about her stuff and i just had so much fun with it it's always just it's like a soft read but also there's action and it's so funny and she's just she's so brilliant like I just, I think she's like the smartest person um, and I love reading her words. I love that. That's a great recommendation. And I think I've seen that one floating around. I have too many books that I want to read and need to read, but not enough time. (laughs) That is always the problem. It is indeed. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for letting me pick your brain for sharing your journey with us and great tips and everybody please make sure to go and support happy medium and give Sarah some love. Thank you so much. 